Hey, I'm up to something a little bit different today. Um, I mean, I've, I've shown you a bit of this before, but uh, it's been a while. Um, at a yard sale not that long ago, I bought just a box that had some random bits of hardware and tools and stuff in it, and had this fairly heavy-duty Schlag padlock with no key, of course. So I, uh, I picked it open, which took some time, and for anybody who's curious, there's the pins that were in it. So it's got uh, master keying wafers in four different chambers. I have no idea where this lock originally came from or who, what the, uh, well, I, I know what the keys look like because of what the pins are, but I don't have a key. And it's a fairly oddball little uh, keyway. It's not the standard SC1, SC2, SC5 that you normally see. It's, I don't know what WW3 means. That's probably important to whoever had it before. But there's what the keyway looks like. It's quite paracentric. Um, it's actually, there's the blank number, 1247. So I, my first inclination was, I know, I'll go to a local locksmith or hardware store or something and buy a couple of copies, of, a couple of blanks of that and file my own keys. Wrong. Not one of the places that I approached locally would sell it to me. Some of them say, no, we only sell cut keys. Some of them said, uh, that sounds weird. I'm not going to deal with you. Um, some of them, uh, just said no, flat out no, with no reason at all. So I went online and yeah, there's places in the States mostly that'll sell me that blank for like several dollars or minimum order of 50 pieces or something and stupid amounts of shipping or you need a trade account or something and really i'm just dicking around it's not worth that much effort or money to me so i'm going to try and make my own key blank just soldering together some thicknesses of the shim brass um into an approximation of that and see if i can make my own key blank and then cut the key I don't know, maybe. So the first thing I notice is I can get one piece through. Actually, no, not quite. It won't go straight through. So I'm thinking that, uh, but from, where's something better to point with? From that point there up to the top, I can go nice and straight. And then if I want, I can build up something on that side. So I think that'll be the first thing I do is just build up a piece that size and uh, out of several layers. And then I'll maybe build this little piece kick over here just for some extra strength when I'm twisting. Uh, this is, as you might expect, a complete experiment. I'm sure it's possible. I'm sure it's possible to do a better job than I'm going to do. But as usual, I'm just having fun here. Not taking myself too too seriously that won't go that way will it go this way no ah this is annoying you know just have to approximate it so about like that which is two point stop bouncing if realistically it doesn't matter because i'll just describe it anyways Yes, this isn't something you would do with your fancy, expensive Mitotoyos or something like that. This is from Canadian Tire. And I'll just make a few passes here. And once I've made a couple of passes, I should be able to just snap it and score it. This is these thin, hard brass. Like I said, it's shim brass. Uh, super thin. I don't even know how interesting this is for anybody watching. He said this is not my normal thing, but if you've if you've read the about page on my YouTube channel, you'll see that this isn't intended to be purely an electronics channel. Matter of fact, if you go back far enough, you notice that. My first 20 or 30 videos were all model railroad, but on the about page, 
it declares, or I declare, I guess, I do declare that my channel is about me exploring my hobbies and just amusing myself. And turning the camera on for anybody who wants to watch over my shoulder. I appreciate that so many of you guys actually do that. You show up and, uh, and watch what I'm up to and listen to me rambling aimlessly and comment and ask questions and correct my mistakes and all that good stuff. So another thing that you'll see if you go and look at my channel's about page, or if you look at the bottom of the description, you have something that says at the bottom of every video, this might not be the best way to do it. It's not the only, certainly not the only way to do it, but it's the way I did it. And that's, that's another part of my, I guess, philosophy of this YouTube channel, for lack of a better term. It's just, I'm mostly just experimenting and playing around. A lot of times those experiments work out reasonably well, at least well enough that I'm not too embarrassed to show them to you. Sometimes they're, they're abject failures, which in and of itself is a learning experience too for all of us, both yourselves and me. Sometimes I'll try it again, but I'm not embarrassed to leave some of my failures in. How many thicknesses this do I need anyway? Yeah, that fits in there. And there's enough sticking out that I've got something to grab onto. I wonder if, where's that, where's that one? I wonder if I should make a bow. A bow is basically what the uh, proper name for that piece that sticks out the front is. Yeah, I think I will. So just kind of like that and I can file it down later. So that's all like that. That's all like that. I'm going to hold this together while I'm soldering it. Okay, after a bit of putzing around, here's what I came up with for now. Anyways, we'll see how this goes. Um, I think I'm going to drop some liquid flux into there. Come on. There we go. Flux just... Uh, to make the soldering work a little bit better, hopefully theoretically. But we'll g give her a shot here. Eek. <laughs> That's not really, no, it's pulling the heat out of there. Okay, I might have to get a little bit more violent. Well, that wasn't what I expected. Get in there. Hmm. That may not be the best option either. So the next thing I'm going to try is the hot air rework here. Let's see if that'll work. Soften up that flux. And I think I'm going to try a slightly thinner solder too. Let's see if that'll work. We'll see if we can heat that up enough that the solder will wick into it. Maybe I will try this stuff because it's got a thicker flux core to it. So maybe in addition to the flux that I put on the side there, maybe that'll actually work. Clamp it, because I don't want the extra thickness, right? Did that work? I don't know. Okay, well that's uh, something. It doesn't bend, that's a good sign. I think I will, where'd my knife go? There it is. Shave some of these extra solder blobs off here. Get it back down to size again. Okay, and I think I'm going to have to file that for thickness, maybe. Um, don't know. 
solder's not that hard to file. And then there's this brass, actually, which I'm kind of counting on for later on in this procedure. Um, okay, that was way too much effort already put into this little project. But I've come this way far, so it's fairly stiff that way and rotationally, so that's good. It fits in all the way to the back and then some. You notice I put a little angle on the front here so that when I shove it in, kind of like the, a real key has, um, so when I shove it in, it pushes the pins out of the way. Now this is an SC1, which is a five pin key, and it has a very common, simple little shape to it. But uh, what I want to do, uh, so this is a six pin key. So I want to mark out where the pins are actually going to land. I think I'll just use a Sharpie. I don't know. So that I'll know where to file. Hoping that the spacing is the same. Okay, so there's my six pin positions. We're going to put that in there. Yeah, those don't match up. Okay. Clean that Sharpie off and find a different way to mark this. No matter what the question, the answer is almost always more power. There, I've got my spots marked. Excellent. I guess I can just drop a, the pins in one at a time, can't I? Let's start with a simple one, number three. One, two, three. So now with that key blank in there, and that pin in pin three position where it's supposed to be, I know I have to file that one down by that much. I'll just use the tailpiece on my... There we go. 1.34 millimeters. Got to file it down that much. Has to come down to that line there. Okay, that's close. Let's try it. So if this works properly, that should settle down in there, but not far enough. So I have to widen that out a little bit. Um, I think I will just use that flat file to do it. Or maybe I'll use the... Yeah. I don't want to make it any deeper now. I just want to... open up the uh, the gullet of it a little bit here. Try that. Pretty close, a little bit deeper maybe. Fine tune that just a little bit more. And then, oh shit. So many things on the floor. There's a little bugger. Come back here. That's what I want. Nice and flat. Okay. Now I just have to repeat with all the other pins. Exactly the same process. But with the ones that have a mastering wafer in them... I have my, I have two options. There's two different depths that it can go to. It can either go to, because there's two different keys that'll open it. It can either go to the depth of the main pin or the depth of the wafer. And I think 
just for fun, I'm going to cut them all to the depth of the wafer, which and I don't know. I'm no expert on this. I'm not sure whether the master key is the one that would use both of those. So it will be a deeper cut or if the master key would just be that one and the normal key would be that one. I guess you could choose it to be either one really, but I think I'm going to cut it to the full depth of both pins. One eternity later. There's all the pins in place, straight edge across the top of them here. Looks like I got a couple that I need to file down just a little bit more. That one and so six and three. Okay. The other thing that I think I'm going to do is put a, soften the angles between them a little bit. Just so that they can get this in and out easier. There, that's a lot cleaner. I think I can get away with that. So, now to put it back together, I guess, and see if it works. So now, I've got all this, the upper pins and springs still in here. So I should be able to just slide that onto there, I think. Yes! No. It's a little tight, but it does open. Should I file this down a little bit more, maybe? Well, now I'll put it back. That's close enough. It, it opens. That's the important part. So let's reassemble that. Ta-da! One padlock with one homemade key. Well, that was a fun little project. Uh, it took a lot longer than I expected. Um, you guys aren't going to see most of that because I'm going to edit it down. But most of it was just repetitive steps. File, test, fit, file, test, fit, file, test, fit, file, test, fit. All right. Well, thanks for watching. Those of you who actually stuck around, I appreciate it. Um, I'm... Obviously, like I said at the beginning, I'm not going to be doing this all the time. I'm not going to be doing any one thing all the time. I'm just going to be following my whims and my, uh, and, uh, what interests me. And I hope some of you come along for the ride. Thanks for watching. I will talk to you later.